Today we're speedrunning through plants vs zombies, but we can only use 3 plants per level, a challenge that starts out pretty simple, but gets very difficult as we get later into the game. But like I said, in World 1, it's not too bad. I mean first of all, the first 3 levels of World 1 only let you have 3 plant slots at most, so not too much to explain there. But the main strategy for the other levels is to use a combination of sunflowers, pea shooters, and cherry bombs. The sunflower is important since we need a lot of sun to complete the challenge efficiently, and the pea shooters are our main damage. So with most levels to go as fast as possible, we want to allow zombies to take a lane or two and get mowed. This lets us focus on only planting sunflowers. Then we can start defending lanes more and more, getting a ton of pea shooters to finish out zombies fast. And finally, we'll end each level with a cherry bomb, quickly taking out the last wave. But in 1.8 and 1.9, we do switch up our strategy a bit. In 1.8, we replace our pea shooters with chompers, as this level introduces bucket heads. Because of this, using insta kills and relying a bit more on the lawnmowers beats the level a lot faster. Then in 1.9, we use the combination of sunflowers, chompers, and repeaters. It's pretty much the same strategy though, of letting zombies get lawn mowed early to save up sun, putting repeaters on as many lanes as possible, and eating bucket heads with our chompers. And that's World 1 done with the exception of 110. In Plants vs Zombies, every 5th and 10th level of each world is just a minigame. These aren't affected by a 3 slots only rule, and I just play them normally, so I'll skip the explanations for all these levels in this video. But what I won't skip is asking you to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and I'd really appreciate it. Now it's time for World 2 where we have to deal with nighttime. This means sunflowers are less effective, and we won't get sun from the sky. Luckily, we acquire the Puff Shroom, who will be a big source of damage for all of these levels. Puff Shrooms are free to place and have relatively short cooldown, so we can fill our lanes with them until we get better sources of damage. And in 2-1, other than the Cherry Bomb at the end, they're actually our only source of damage since the level isn't too hard. But in 2-2, we change out the Cherry Bomb for a Repeater and gain access to Sun Shrooms, who are much more suited for night levels than sunflowers. And it's exactly what you'd expect. Get as many Sun Shrooms down as we can in early game, and eventually start using Repeaters to help out with the waves. The next few levels are pretty much the same too, except we get the Fume Shroom, who can hit multiple zombies at once, and deal with door zombies much easier. And actually, now that we made this switch, we can use this exact same strategy for overall 2, with the exception of 2-6, as it introduces football zombies. Luckily, Hypno Shrooms are the perfect counter, as they one-shot the football zombies, and then turn them to our side as well. So it's an easy and pretty cheap way to beat the level fast. But now in World 3, we have a new problem to overcome, which is water. And this means for almost every level now, we'll need to use the lily pads as one of our plants, giving us the combination of sunflowers, lily pads, and repeaters for these first 4 levels. And the strategy is pretty simple, but also very stressful. Since repeaters require 200 sun to plant, we need a huge assortment of sunflowers early on. So in each of these levels, we'll start out by planting a few sunflowers and hope the starting zombies go to other lanes. If they do go to other lanes, we can simply allow them to reach the lawnmowers and use the time to get more sunflowers. But if we get unlucky and a zombie approaches a large amount of sunflowers, we need to immediately plant a repeater before it. But once we get a couple lanes of sunflowers, the game gets a bit less stressful with all the sun coming in. At this point, we can switch the strategy to getting a repeater on each lane and planting the sunflowers behind them. Then, after all of that, we can start focusing on the water lanes. Luckily, water zombies will always come later in the level, which gives us time to prepare. So after the four land lanes are safe, we can plant some lily pads and repeaters, and be safe in the water as well. The only thing to really look out for is snorkel zombies, which start coming at 3-3. These guys dodge all the attacks by staying underwater, and we can only hurt them when they're eating a plant. So we end up needing to sacrifice a bunch of sunflowers and lily pads, and just hope they don't overwhelm us. And this will continue to be our strategy until we make it to 3-6, where the game hits us with Zombonis. This means we really want an insta-kill plant, and can momentarily switch to sunflowers, squashes, and 3-peaters. Now this does mean we need to do even more grinding to afford the 325 sun cost of the 3-peaters, but it follows the same principle of letting zombies make it to the lawnmowers in early game and farming up sun. Then we can place the 3-peaters in the 2nd and 5th columns, so they'll be able to hit the entire map. So that deals with all the general zombies, letting us squash zombonies as they come. 
Unfortunately, this strategy won't work for 3-7 because the level has both Zombonis and Snorkel Zombies, so we need to go back to the Sunflower, lily pad, and Repeater combo. Since this level is going to be really hard though, we will buy a Rake for the first time, which automatically kills the first zombie of a level and is active for the next three. This is also when one of the unluckiest things of the run happened to me, and I'll just let you watch. Oh, and we got two right after each other, that's awesome. Two right, three, three, why not make it three? And two bobsled people in a row. Come on, what, what is that? Come on. Yeah, as I said, I have to pay a little bit of attention to this. Oh my gosh, that was terrifying. So yeah, that happened, but we still won. And immediately after that level, we get to 3-8 where they introduce dolphin zombies. These zombies move really quickly until they jump over a plant and lose their dolphin. So we just need to place a lily pad in front of them as soon as possible, but it can definitely be difficult to deal with. And then in 3-9, all of these terrifying zombies come together and make a pretty scary level. It's not too different of a strategy than normal, but it really comes down to playing well because a single mistake can ruin the run. Thankfully, I got my army out quickly, dealt with all threats, and made it to the hardest world in this challenge, World 4. This world brings back nighttime, but we also need to deal with the pool and fog at the end of the level. And for the first level, the strategy may surprise you. Now we do have access to sea shrooms, which are basically puff shrooms in water, but we don't use them. Instead, our combo is sun shrooms, puff shrooms, and lily pads. And we do this for the sole reason of puff shrooms and lily pads having a much shorter recharge time than sea shrooms, making us able to deal with water threats faster. Just a cool strategy I thought I'd mention. We also decided to finally buy pool cleaners so we don't get destroyed if water zombies make it to the end, which will come into play later. Now in 4-2, we'll switch out our lily pads for 3 peters just to be a bit faster before switching back to lily pads again in 4-3. Not too much to explain for these levels though. Except for the fact that 4-3 introduces balloon zombies which fly over all of our regular plants. Thankfully, the lawnmowers can deal with them, but if we get two in the same lane, it would destroy our run. And that fear really starts getting addressed in 4-4 when we need to completely switch our strategy. If you've watched my No Sunflower speedrun, you'll know that we get a ton of balloon zombies in 4-4 and don't want to risk the time loss by just hoping we get lucky and not getting two in the same lane. So we decide to switch to sun shrooms, lily pads, and cactuses since cactuses can take out any balloon zombies. But for us to beat the level only using cactuses, we need to be very fast with our planting. We're not able to waste any time and need to get sun shrooms down immediately so they can hopefully give us a faster sun return. And of course, this means we need to allow a few zombies to go to the lawnmowers. But if we get unlucky and a zombie tries to attack a big amount of sun shrooms, we need to plant a cactus to protect them. So yeah, you can probably see why this level is a bit stressful. Thankfully though, once we get the cacti going, we're a lot safer. We eventually want at least three per lane and can slowly take out all the zombies. So hooray, that's one of the scariest levels in the game done. And now it's time for some slightly more relaxing ones. In 4-6, we go back to Sunflower, lily pad, and Puff Shroom. And in 4-7, we can switch out our lily pad for a star fruit who attacks all around him. Pretty simple levels. Then in 4-8, we get to deal with the pogo zombies, which means we're going back to the Sun Shroom, lily pad, and Puff Shroom and want to get large amounts of puff shrooms in all of our lanes. Otherwise, the pogo zombies just jump past everything and are kind of miserable. But that's nothing compared to 4-9 where balloon zombies are back. It's still the same strategy as 4-4, just with a bit of harder zombies. But yeah, these cactus levels are not good for my heart. But that's fine because with the completion of 410, it's time for the next world, World 5. And this time we're on a rooftop. And for almost every single level in World 5, we use the exact same strategy. We want to get two rows of sunflowers as fast as possible before we start spamming pots and cabbage bolts. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Who knew that this really simple strategy would be the easiest way to beat pretty much all of World 5, but it's surprisingly successful. We do get a bit of a scare in 5-8 though, where they introduce everyone's favorite zombie, the Gargantur. Thankfully for this level, we only get two, but since our cabbage pulps aren't strong enough to beat them on their own, we need to rely on roof cleaners. This also means we need to pray that we don't get two gargantures in the same lane, because that would mean we need to reset the level, but thankfully for once I got lucky on this stage, and that didn't happen. And luckily in 5-9, we don't need to worry about that possibility anymore, because we finally unlocked the melon pulp. 
This plant is really expensive, and that means we need to let at least one lane go to zombies at the beginning, but in return for high cost, these plants are really strong. So strong that they can take out a regular zombie in just 3 hits, a conehead in just 7, and a gargantuan, well I'm not really sure, but so little that a lane of melon pults puts them down very easily. So there we go, all that's left at this point is 510, and as soon as we finish that level, we can end off time with a 4, 35, 16, which puts us at third on speedrun.com. Alright, subscribe if you enjoyed, bye.